Good I evening, know. and welcome to the Cory Valley Unified Union School District Board Meeting. It's Thursday, June 8th. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The first business is the approval of the agenda of a couple of things. One, you can remove under 8C leave requests. We don't have any leave requests. And under 5, making it E to waive the days for um, Pulteney, waive one day for Pulteney Elementary and High School. Um, Motion by Mike. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. General public comment. Is there anyone of the public that doesn't want to speak to an item not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on. Old business, Pulteney High School bleachers update. We're going to send that over to Lewis. Uh, so Pony High School um, currently has some bleachers that I believe are about 50 years old at this point, and they've been repaired uh, many times over the years, and they got to the point where they were out of compliance due to uh, the rails, I believe, and the, the, uh, the width of the, the stairs going up. So um, we were brought up at a, at a previous meeting to this discussion point. We went out to bid. Uh, we only received uh, one bid um, from Huckabee's Eating. The bid is for, and it was in the packet, uh, it's for $100,160. And that is for replacement of um, both sets of bleachers. Um, so when you walk in, there's a larger set to the right and a smaller set to the left. Um, I believe at this time, just the right-hand side is the bigger issue. Um, they're, bo they're both the same age. They both um, have been repaired many times, but the right-hand side is the one that's out of compliance at this time. Um, <clears throat> so it is 100,000 to, to replace both of the sets. Um, if they take care of removal of the existing ones and, and um, removal and putting them in the dumpster, that's an additional $8,000. That's probably something that we could manage, uh, manage in house for the moment. Um, because we did only receive one bidder, we did have to get a waiver from the state. Um, we did get that through uh, last week. So at this point, it's just waiting for approval. Um, it would be something that would, would probably be done in the fall, um, the late summer or fall, just to the, uh, I think they took it about 14 weeks. Lead time to get the bleachers. Um, so it, it would be done in time for basketball season. We'll get the, we'll get the ball. And so are we paying from surplus, from the sinking fund? Uh, so my recommendation would be use the capital improvement fund. And how much money is in that fund currently? Uh, we put an additional uh, 400,000 um, and then we put 650 to start. So there's a the box uh, Okay. Okay. Discussion? Is that everything? Thanks. Uh, these are for rollers, these are for wooden color. The, these are for the wooden, oh no, these are for the plastic. plastic students. Students. Yep. And that's yep. everything. Like a month, well, we got to buy motors, they don't come included, or we got to do this is the whole everything. No, this is a, a full replacement. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is, is the only other, does that include the electrical work, or is that something we have to do? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just the, the, um, the yeah, one thing, your what, building's old, like we have a problem. You go to replace an outlet, oh, that's two bucks, and they go to do it. That's, wow, that's 3500 out For what they told us, it was um, right now we plug it into the wall outlet yeah, yeah. and plug it into the yeah. pictures. I think the guy was saying that it's just one of those you plug yeah. directly. Yeah. Yeah. In you have the special outlet there or something yeah. like that. I'm not positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was. yeah. I mean, I'm not seeing anything about electrical work. 
um, it says uh, integral power with tendon control 115 volt. Um, so I mean, it is saying that there's electric electric components, but uh, that would be a whether our, whether our current outlet could support that. Um, I'm not sure about that piece, but um, a lot of the times with these projects, I mean, if there's minor electrical work, we just take that out of the out of the local budget. That yeah, would come, mm -hmm. come out of the research budget. So it does seem like under big clarifications that electrical work is probably going to need to be done. The good news is there's wires and outlets right there, so it's not like you have to run stuff okay. across the gym. So. Depending on the, the quality of the, the conduits mm -hmm. there, that's what people that's kind of Tom's getting at. You know, so if you, you walk into the gym, there's three kids on both sides. But just not. Oh, just one side of the gym. Yes. Yeah. What's on yeah. The yeah. It's just a wall. Just a wall. Yeah. Okay, so a motion would be in order to approve the bid for $100,160 from telescoping stands for both sets of bleachers and that the existing bleachers will be mo removed in-house. So moved. Motion by Linda. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. New business, co-mingling of ballots. So at our last board meeting, there was a couple board meetings ago, the discussion uh, was posed to the board around uh, whether or not we can co-mingle ballots. Uh, I reached out to our uh, to our attorney, Chris Leopold, to discuss this. And uh, the advice from Chris Leopold was, first of all, I said, no, that uh, you know, the Cory Valley Board cannot vote, uh, can, you know, cannot vote to not commingle votes. You know, it's, it's a bit of a tongue twister there. But so what he, his advice would be that the board would approve the purchase of a tabulator as uh, suggested. Uh, so it was statutory language in place. Uh, that uh, you know, the only way the board could adjust the articles of agreement is to uh, would be, uh, well, actually, state law states that you can't uh, adjust it. Only this uh, board of civil authorities can appoint a clerk or, uh, you know, commingling. So it said the, this board does not have the authority to do that. There was a, I know, the ask, I can't remember the exact name of the uh, board up north that has this in their bylaws, but as per legislation in 2019, any district or SU that had this in place prior to that would be grandfathered, but any district that adopted this. So if this board said, well, we're just going to change our bylaws, it would not fall under that. Uh, so you, we'd still have to uh, co-mingle votes. So if you had done if you had done it prior to 2019, and if we had to have this discussion before then, Correct. we would have been able to. But Correct. now we can't. Yeah. Right. Okay. So what was the part about the clerk again? So the clerk, the question was, can the board uh, adjust the articles agreement to incorporate the clerks, the assistant secretaries of the SU? And Chris said, no, state law states the members of the Board of Civil Authorities has to be on transfer of votes. Uh, believes that if, they, if anyone's going to change that, it has to be the members of the Board of Civil Authorities, it would not be this board. So a local Board of Civil Authority could move to have Correct. their clerk, if they wanted to, to be an assistant clerk in the issue Correct. to do that. Correct. So that would have to be done in individual jurisdictions. Correct. But it could be done. Yes. Or we could buy the tabulator. I would rather try that route because that's what the girls want. They yeah. want to travel. Yeah. The, tra the traveling is, you got to travel both ways. So, I mean, my wife works on it, so I understand how it works. What would happen is wherever the tabulator is would be wherever the clerk of the SU is. So, they the clerk vote. of Corey Valley. Right. So, that clerk, so those people who vote in that, and let's just use Poli because that's where it is now. Mm -hmm. Those votes could be run concurrently through that machine if we had a second machine. They would still have to wait for the other two towns to come. To run they would day. have to pull the votes out of the machine to recount them by hand to make sure it's accurate. And then if it's accurate, then they can go ahead and use those votes. But then they got to run the other two towns through the machine. Mm -hmm. 
So throw that to the board and what, what we would like to do. So, so if someone still has to, so the tabulator, if there's one tabulator, you still have to bring stuff to the tabulator, right? Right, right. you exactly. just don't have to count them by hand. You can just put them in the So there's still, the someone has to travel then. Right. Right. And we're not like getting rid of that problem. No. no. Okay. So that, the travel issue is still there, whether we have a tabulator or so, not. So, so the whether civil whether board of authority could trump having to take them to one place and say you could count them in your local municipality that's what our attorney believes is. so we so our attorney's recommendation them. was the tabulator but that's it just his recommendation the board has so you could have a local clerk appointed by the board of authority count those votes in that town and then report it they physically don't have to go and meet is that what you're saying i do not believe no that because that would be not Commingling. Yes, but yeah. So they still would have to transport. Okay. So yeah. really, what we're talking about who the transporters are. Correct. Right now, it is um, JPs. JPs, whoever the right. JPs are. I do believe the discussion, Kirk, was just around the considering just uh, some of the individuals just didn't want to travel at that time of night, or just mm -hmm. it'd be easier just to call in as we could during COVID or just report. But post COVID, we're back to you know we cannot uh, commingle. So it really doesn't change anything because the JPs are going to do it anyway. I mean, whether it's the clerk or a JP, are you saying that the clerk can do it without a JP, i.e. an individual clerk could take them and wouldn't have to have a companion JP to do it with them? Yeah, if you're a JP, you don't have to travel with someone. You could. Oh, no, I think you do because I checked on that. That's not actually. So more than one person yeah, has, has to, to be two present. People. has to be two people, let's say. And I, yeah, I, I kind of thought it was that way too, but I did look it up and my clerk said the same thing. So I'm just, I, I, I would assume they would not allow for sole transport, I right, think, you know, right. just from a. So it doesn't really change yeah, anything. Right. Who are the JPs? It's are either going to be the clerk, two people the anyway. clerk or the JP. And currently, clerks don't travel, it's just JPs that yeah. travel. I wouldn't necessarily say we should burden on the clerks, so it doesn't really matter. It's just, it's the burden is on the clerk, whoever is the clerk for Cory Valley. Yeah. So. Buying the tabulator allows wherever the tabulator is to count in that community. And that should, should be faster in theory. They still have to take them out to count, I believe. So they okay. physically, even though the machine says 500, I believe that they have to take those out and make sure it's accurate. Only, they only have to, if I don't want to spend money on a tabulator if we're going to count them anyway. Yeah. Like, that's, and it's not yeah. solving well, travel. You, still, you, don't, you don't have to, I don't think, we'll have to get clarification. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to test it. Oh, it it's you have to take them out if like it says uh, if it does the tabulator it kicks them out the tabulator marks them invalid it's no different than anything else when right. you do with the municipality so i mean i'm not opposed to tabulator it just seems like is it worth spending money on that if it's not really solving our issue here well it is a better issue because when you go to count when you it, get there it's helping I take Proctor, yeah. so we have to count Proctor to make sure if she says there's 852 that voted that I have 852 ballots, right? Yeah. Bolton needs to do that, Wes Rutland needs to do that. Right. If you're off, then we all wait while you count again to, till it marks up. Okay. And then we put them in the, on the table and spread them all around, even though they're all the same color and look the same, <laughs> right. and we count to make sure that whatever those three numbers are, that's what we have. And that's when you end up counting and counting, counting. and counting. So okay. the tabulator would it's help in that, that respect okay. because you could put them in as a town. So you wouldn't have to vote. You wouldn't have to, um, yeah. You mean like you put all the same well, town in at one, at like, Consecutive yeah, and then do the second because it just looks it at the just, yeah, yeah, the ballots are all the right, same. Right. Yeah. But isn't That's, that not commingling then if we're doing them like well, you're putting them all in the tabulator. I mean, I don't know. Uh, you don't know what uh, the outcome is, but you know how many voted. I get that. Which which doesn't change anything because the clerk would know how many people voted anyway. So yeah. that doesn't right. change anything. You just don't know how it voted. Right. No, I no, so I get that. If, I, I just if that if, speeds that process, if you want, I could bring some clarifying questions back to Chris. Yeah, I think we need back to talk about that. Or the clerks. The clerks. Do people yeah. not travel or no? No, they're yeah, going to have to travel. You're still going to have to travel. We can't do anything about it. No, because we didn't. 
We, we didn't, didn't have that in our bylaws, so yeah, we can't change it because when we, we first did bylaws, they told us we had to do it like that. Yeah, I know. Right, but I think our I so our select it. boards. Does that know. mean our select boards could vote to to change the no. Board? No, that's a separate, separate board. board. Yeah. And if they okay. did it, somebody's gonna have to travel yeah you're still gonna have to take it wherever that that's really what the big beef was it wasn't the counting no so much it was the travel that was the beef and then yeah could they move the counter to different town every year well it's the clerk of your of quarry valley right so the clerk's in Polk. so if that were to change if the clerk became less relevant or proctor then that machine would go wherever that clerk is well the tabulator just hooks on to the current machine it's not buying a whole new machine it's just a piece that goes on that's what middletown that's what well springs has like after she does the municipal then she puts the tabulator on for the um school it's not a separate machine it's a piece that goes on to like the an attachment kind of. do the clerks want a tabulator that's what betsy suggested yeah and she's our clerk so if, if they want a tabulator, but I, think I mean, we, they don't ask for much. Right. But I think that was with the understanding that maybe if they were only going to have, there was still wouldn't be the, the travel part. So yeah, the travel, travel parts. I think that's, we need no, to I think she that. realized that. I mean, because she looked into it and sent us emails. She, she, I don't think she thought that wasn't going to happen. She just thought having the tabulator would make it. Yeah. Easier. She's I mean, I could go so back. I don't like, have that email with me this evening, but that's she had. She's the one who did the initial research and sent us um, how much it was going to cost and like that. Okay. So, um, yeah, she did that on December 9th. <clears throat> so there's a ballot it? cost. Yeah, we pay for we the pay ballots. For yeah. And the free ballot. And we gave something. Cause she talked, yeah, she talked about, you know. Do you have the cost there, Lisa, just to refresh our mind? I think she said it was like $5,000, isn't that? Uh, uh, yeah. That's just for the tabloids, not for the ballots. No, but we pay for the ballots every year anyway. I mean, it's not changing that. So, I mean, we have surplus funds we could pay it out of, or we could pay it out of, I don't know. The thinking button. <laughs> we don't have to do it. I mean, we can wait and get on that clarification. No, it's well, what is what are the questions for clarification so we can ask Chris Leopold? I mean, I just want to leave here knowing what those questions are. So, because I do know there is some lead time on ordering that. I don't know. I don't think anybody's against the tabulator. I think we're just trying to get. People do not have to travel. It doesn't seem like it's going to work. No, that's not going to be. Yeah, a I don't think that counters it. Okay. Right. I believe. Well, I just was like doing. If it's not, if it's going to help, and it's five thousand dollars seems like kind of a lot of money to me, but if it's going to help make things go faster and make their life easier, and it will last for a while, I'm fine with it. It just seems. Well, I know that's good. what uh, Middletown Springs. They had they a tabulator have. down there, and that's what they've been using. And because um, Eric did speak about that. Okay. Um, it says Wells School District using the Town of Wells tabulator. Nord has closed the polls and completed the end of night election processing for election. She puts in another set of program cards from the LHS. Then when the school arrives, they put their ballots through the tabulator instead of hand counting. It is a much faster process. We would still need to count the ballots first for each school just to verify the number of ballots match a voter. So it would just be the one time. Then we can put through the tabulator. Um, the estimated cost for this is $1,250, which would go up if pricing increases. The Quarry Valley could purchase their own tabulator for an estimated $5,500. This is a one-time charge. But there's a programming charge for a real election. Yes. Right. Yeah. So is that what that one thousand was like? So that's like to. It's about the same number my clerk gave me. It was about twelve hundred dollars per yeah. per so, real election. So, so every there election, a there's a, a there, so election. there's a recurring cost right. of a thousand to twelve hundred dollars plus the, the 
the, the initial the cost of the job. <coughs> so we're talking in the first year's six thousand ish dollars. Yeah. Okay. Almost plus an ongoing one thousand. And then the ballot cost, which would pay for it. Right. right. That's already. Betsy and, and even Nora. Well, I mean, this is this is from Betsy and from her speaking with Nora. I mean. She, Betsy, had orig originally thought we could do like a taconic and green because they did a special um, election to establish their commingling. But okay. that, because of what Chris, what Chris explained said. before, that's what we can't do. So, okay. um, huh? To the state. Well, and that was the state when we first, if you remember, when we first merged, they said that we had to have that in our, yeah. So, it was required. Geography matters. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. So the question is, do you want to go another month? Do you want to authorize the expenditure with um, um, giving Lewis the authority to go speak to Betsy to make sure this is exactly, exactly. what it is that she wants to do? I mean, we talked about it the night um, in March when we were setting their accounting. Um, <laughs> and she was like, wouldn't a tabulator be nice? I was like, sure. Um, or do you wanna, and, and like I said, I'm, the the piece is just because I know there is, um, with all of those stupid um, counting machines, some time with getting pieces to it. I mean, I know our clerk complains constantly about the machine. And did they, it's something that lasts a while, right? It's not. It's a. It's kind of just like a feed trip. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just. It's just. It's. If we're not um, having an election, then it's not going to be piece uh, a yeah. part of that machine that you put your ballot in. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I think the key piece is just to make sure that um, what we're purchasing could move from community to community. That all of our um, three community machines are compatible. That would be good to check, mm -hmm. to make sure we're buying something that doesn't only work in one town. <laughs> and I don't know, I mean, the machine we've had, we've had for a very long time. So I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Tabulators like a feed sheet yeah. rather than, because when you vote individually, you just feed it. So this way they, it may speed things up because then they can just feed. Yeah, no, I, through, I'm. Which yeah. would be a help. Yeah, speed so is, you're still gonna have to count time. hand count one time when you first get there right, to just to make sure, sure. right in the drive over there you didn't take 20 ballots out and throw them out the window so <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> or add 20. <laughs> so right. okay so could a motion be in order to authorize lewis to speak to betsy and if this is um the purchase to um authorize a purchase not to um be over eight thousand dollars so moved okay <laughs> <laughs> any further discussion all those in favor Aye. Aye. any opposed motion passes unanimously thank you Lewis, for offering to do that uh Community use of school facilities. This is the application for the use of the facilities. And this was something we had talked about at the last meeting that everyone, um, just so one, we're use, all using the same form and two, that um, the fee is being addressed the same also. The only thing I think should maybe be highlighted is where it says I, the undersigned, and it says we'll provide a current copy of liability insurance. I wonder if that just shouldn't be um, bold in there because it doesn't really speak to insurance anyplace else in the in the application. And that's kind of a big piece. If they don't have that, then you can't use it. So I would hate for someone just to like mm -hmm. start checking off without really reading that. Maybe it should be the first thing then. <laughs> Pull it up. Yeah, I and highlight it. Because honestly, I read the whole thing and I was like, Jesus, it doesn't mention insurance in any place. So I went back and read those. Any concerns about it from anyone? 
price wise, just anything. <clears throat> To that publication, yeah. If we go down the road, like two years, we can adjust the fees if we need to. Do that, yeah, yeah. Are those fees still the custody fee is custodial fee on here is 30 an hour, maybe charged based on type and time of event, right? The custodian get all that, no, no, is that's just the case? fee because the custodian is there. Did we do something? It says 30 or 40, and that guy gets it, or girl who's ever worked in that event, or no? It was, no. He seemed it nice to award him for working. Yeah. Well, they're getting paid. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Who else would they be getting overtime if that was a Saturday? Uh, I mean, depending on what they if, if they're over 40 hours, if they're over 40. So, um, <clears throat> so if they work the full weekend, then they're also working Saturday. So they, they would get some compensation. Um, so much if they decide they want to work Saturday and Friday, they have yeah. the manpower to do that. They could switch out. Yeah. Did you want to speak to this at all, Chris? Or? No, I, I just need to know the fees, what the board feels comfortable with. Yeah. I, I do know that um, you know, if you look at the the reasons for waiving, um, I think that provides a lot of leeway to you know building administrators, and so therefore, while one building administrator may choose to waive, but one may, may not. So I think that's just another thing we just have to look at amongst ourselves: the consistency with the fees, with fee usage. So because uh, if someone says, uh, you know, like. Well, you know what really defines like a school-based event or nonprofit organization, or you know. So, I know that in the past, uh, uh, teams have or you know individuals have allowed the use of a space, the exchange of goods. So they might uh, might be able to take a uh, a group to a camp or to an event uh, in lieu of payments. And I don't necessarily have an issue with with that, but I think that's also part of just you know, waiting. So okay. still will be some inconsistency there, but. Hundred dollars a day, though. That seems. That's that's what had no. been there, and so if the board would like to adjust that, I, I'm not a whatever the board. Yeah. What do you guys do as building administrators? Do you think this looks? It's rather like a case by case scenario. Just yeah. Just that yeah. Maybe wants to use it. It's going to serve a in our community. You know, yeah. I think there's a conversation around it. Obviously, there's concerns. We. And meet with them. I usually meet with anybody that puts one in anyways, just because. Right. I would kind of yeah. like to see, like you do with a car rental, I'd like to see like a $500 deposit up front and then deduct it from, deduct whatever out of that, rather than. Um, well, I could, I, a couple of organizations that I've been involved with who rented places out, we did it similar to this. And there was some degree of trashing. And if we put a little higher price on it, people tended to want to get that money back. So they took a little better care of it. That's that's what I've found. The damage is done. Yeah. So so like, you know I think most of the organizations that were from what I've seen that were renting it out to has been either school school run events yeah. or nonprofit organizations that are renting out facilities. Uh, as far as I mean the hundred dollars day, I, there's not a lot of organizations that we're actually charging. Um, I think the, the main one that we would charge is like the AAUs. Uh, so what would be the problem to a deposit then? We're not charging No, them. I mean, if the board wants to do a deposit, then that's fine. We want to Does it even pay for a cost? Some places, like when we rent our room, um, we, do it, we do it in blocks. Like you do it like three hours blocks so you pay that well, way yeah. my big thing is like when you say if it's the town stuff or kids in the town whatever that's all free but right you get these money machines aau coming through that are making ten thousand dollars in a weekend and they're giving us a hundred that's yeah. costing us money it costs more than a hundred dollars to rent that gym out from eight to seven you know what i mean yeah well that's <laughs> Would you like the idea of what Lisa said about a block? So maybe the first four hours is $100 and then it goes up after no, that. You got to be a better way. It's costing us money for them to make money. 
and that doesn't seem, I don't mean to put some degree of wear and tear. <laughs> wear and tear. <laughs> no, I think AA uses it. Wear and tear. AA uses yeah. money yeah. machine. Yeah. Oh my God. We've only had practices of what we'll turn it. Yes, yeah, but we you been. have them at the high school. We've had them at the high school. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have them on the week. They have them like all weekend, mm -hmm. and they start at, like eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a it's a big it's thing. A lot of people they're coming in and general. out. There's trash yeah, removal. There's bathrooms. yeah. It, there's a lot. There's, there's a lot of people in and out. So yeah, and they usually do a bunch of gyms in the area. Which well, we could. Do you want to put this on for the July agenda to yeah, um, come back with the, ideas? I, I, we're probably yeah. not going to be using the, the gym or doing yeah. that here in the yeah, next yeah. month because we're going to be doing work on the school. So if people want to um, maybe bring back um, other places, yeah, other suggestions where you can rent rooms, what that looks like, what those expectations are, maybe bringing back samples, that would be a good idea. Yeah, if there are ways to see what other even schools are charging because for these for-profit folks who are essentially if they're going to shop around i imagine potentially for prices too right and if they're so what are our what are our, our other local folks charging yeah okay so we can do that and we'll place that back on the agenda all right proctor high school roof replacement it's like a big night to spend money on this. <laughs> this actually won't cost you too much yeah. So, uh, uh, so this winter, Proctor Roof had some damage due to ice dams on the roof, which uh, caused a rip in the rubber membrane. Um, it is a flat roof with a rubber roof. Uh, <clears throat> there was some some damage. You could insurance claim. Insurance covered everything that was over twenty five hundred dollars. Um, they also are covering for the replacement of the roof. Um, we received the check so far for sixty one thousand dollars. And once we have a contract and a scheduled replacement, they'll send us an additional $95,000 for a total of $156,000. We're not sure what the cost of the roof will be. We have gone out to bid. Um, bids are due back at the June 19th. Um, I'm sorry, bids are due back June 15th. Uh, so at the, at the July meeting, we will discuss those bids. But I just wanted you to be aware of it. And, so there wasn't a surprise when you saw that they fly. Sounds good. Good <laughs> news from Lewis for once. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, Corn Valley Board War, effective communication. Um, this goes into um, board retreat. So everyone's doing board retreats. It's more than board retreat. So I I'm, I'm think we could, could we, um, Maybe put it toward, I should have done that at the beginning, and I apologize. Maybe we should put that at the end of the meeting, because we may end up having more than just toward retreat. Okay. Well, what would we like to discuss here? I think it would be better if we waited till the end of the meeting, and then we can discuss that and bring it up. Do we have a, do we have a date for our board retreat yet, or is that what we were going to? That's what we were discussing. Oh, okay. Apparently, there are things on the agenda that are moving around now. So, do you want to have the board retreat at the July meeting, at a different meeting? Do you want a facilitator? What would the board like to do? Um, I think July meeting. Would be good, except I've never seen it. And it's It was the 5th, Wednesday, so the 6th. The 13th, wasn't it? It's no. July 13th. Okay. okay. I thought it was the 6th. Well, that would have been, the SU would have been the 5th, right? Right, and I thought we were the Thursday, so the SU we moved to Wednesday. So wouldn't it be the 6th? It's the 2nd. Second, second Thursday. Thursday. So it's the right. second Thursday. Third Thursday would be the 13th. Yeah. Yep. yep. My mistake. Thank you. Yep. Does a board want to have a retreat? Do you just want to have yeah. a regular meeting? Um, regular meeting. <laughs> Last time we, we called it a retreat because it was just us, but we had it as mm -hmm. if like the timing was as if a regular meeting. Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean, Tom? 
in terms of regular meeting. Do you mean the content is as if we're doing a regular meeting yes. or we have a specific retreat items that we just talk about? He wants us to have a regular content. Yeah, I think. I'm only one guy. Tree, but That's fine. I just it's the same thing. thing in three times. Okay. Somebody comes in and drives. Well, we don't, well, have, to we don't have to have you don't have to have a facilitator, yeah. but you need to have a general idea of what you're going to discuss. What, yeah, content wise. Um, okay. Will the the strategic planning be kind of done and solidified and and shared by them? I mean, that that might be something that would be interesting if it is. To dig into a little bit. So the strategic plan is going to will be discussed more at the SU board level. But we could talk about just it in terms the, of it. it you you know, know, everyone's mm -hmm. going to be coming familiar with it mm -hmm. and, and informing future directions. So if we're thinking about what we're doing for the next year, making sure that things are plugged into the directions that are being set forth in the strategic plan. Um, so I think that's where there's that balance of policy versus procedural pieces. And I think mm -hmm. where there the board at the SU approved the the goals and strategic initiatives and our goal would be to in September to bring it back to the SU board here's what year one looks like we'd be more happy to discuss but I think part of it is like the, the board sets the direction and then it's our our, our job as ministers and say here's how we're going to get to that point yeah and so I think I, that's where but it, I'm saying it's like in July I don't think we'll have that we have the draft of the goals and strategic initiatives that we could that was my question not everyone in this out. room went to the meetings where even those big picture ideas were being developed so for, that was more what i was suggesting right and i think that is the it's, conversation i, I okay. understand but i think one of the things that i i want to encourage a conversation but i also uh, and i'll just say i, I was disappointed that we didn't have more board participation in our portrait graduate strategic plan uh, throughout this process where individuals had an opportunity at that time to really kind of set forth a vision and I appreciate those that came but uh, it, it, those that didn't it, it seems it's kind of that it, we can discuss that and look at where we're going through um, I, I have an issue with that I, I, my my concern always is just how far in the weeds does the board get and there are certain things that it's administrators job procedurally to say you know here's you know, the board sets the goals Here's how we're going to achieve those. And so we can, you know, we can discuss that in July. We can go through that. I, I don't have an issue with that. It's not a problem. I, I, my concern is just when a board start blurring lines and start moving to procedural pieces. Yeah, I. there might be there's something else. That's not what I was thinking yeah. personally I at mean, all. I think, too, and if it's not ready till September, that's great. If the timing isn't working out for July, it was sort of just the everyone gets a chance to look at it and chat about it was sort of yeah i mean if it's a strategic plan that only the su board is involved with then that's the su board but if we are integrated into that which i feel like we are it seems like it would be nice to have you know at least a focused look on not procedure but like what is the strategic plan about like how right. does that inform our vision as Quarry Valley right. is that you know that kind of conversation right. not and, like and we are going to be sharing that out with these I mean I was going to do it but I was busy for the past day or so yeah um but we are going to share out what was approved at the GRC support meeting yeah. on Tuesday with everyone to view and yeah I do think at, at local boards we can discuss this whether we through a tree I think it's the more we can discuss it the better uh, I, I don't have an issue that. Yeah, I mean, if we want to do that in a regular board meeting, that's yeah, fine right. too. Totally. Whenever yeah. it's fine, I just so. think it's something like if people worked on it, it's it's going to be executed, and if mm -hmm. it's not discussed here, that seems like right. a shame. So I feel like in this board, it could it would be worth it to have a discussion, whether that's a retreat or not. I don't know. Yeah. So. I I, I would like to see more discussions around academics and around what's going on in schools as opposed to some of the other things. That, we're all discussed. So I, I have no problem bringing all this you know, strategic plan. So. Yeah. so it doesn't have to be a retreat. We can just have a conversation yeah. about the, the document. Obviously, I mean, we voted on the document, so it's not going to change the document. Right. The document yeah. stands yeah. as it is. We all voted for it. But to just have, yeah, I'd like that the way of just having a conversation and talking about how 
affects Cora Galley's, just the students, the community, and the, the staff. Yeah, I like that idea. It's so that's retreat. September. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're talking about July. Anybody else want to have a retreat? Focus on, you know, how we do what we do or what we could be doing better or differently or nobody wants to, then nobody wants to. So. All right, so we'll move on to the consent agenda. Approval of the minutes. Motion will be in order to approve the May 11th minutes. Motion by Mike. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Approval of warrants. You receive your warrant through the GRC issue email. All questions should be directed to Lewis. Motion will be in order for the approval of warrants. So moved. Motion by Kristen. Any discussion? I just had a question. What are we going to do E on your business? What did I say E was? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, can we okay. just, yeah, we'll okay. take up a vote on this. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, I'm sorry, I wrote E down. I didn't write it was. A motion will be in order to waive June 7th, one day for Pulteney Elementary and Pulteney High School. So moved. Motion by Kristen. Any discussion? Why? Because the school was closed. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Superintendent's report. Thank you. Uh, majority of this information is for informational purposes only. Uh, just uh, one thing I would like to highlight uh, that is just around the final legislative updates. Uh, that uh, you see here that uh, it has been delayed. There's a veto session scheduled for June 20th. After that session has occurred, they will then uh, begin to compile uh, you know, an update in terms of what um, what these if, you know, new bills mean for us. Yeah, for here at Fort Valley, you know, the impact on our schools. Uh, we'll have that hopefully for the July 4 meeting. Uh, if you do not have that in time for the July, we'll definitely have that for the August 4 meeting as well. Um, the rest of the, you can see about PCB sampling. We do have uh, the summer Pulteney High School is in line for PCB sampling. So um, we'll be working with uh, Rich Holcomb and Joe Devonis and getting that scheduled. And we should have results uh, hopefully by the end of the summer uh, but, you know, or uh, early fall. It's really, it's taken between six to eight weeks to get the results back. Uh, so uh, what's that? That's the last school day. Yes. <clears throat> So, and once we receive results, we'll we'll share those out. Uh, we are still waiting on results for uh, West Broward right now. So, once we have them, we'll share those. I did want to take this time just to uh, discuss, and I know that we see we have a large number of attendees, uh, both online and if you're here in person, uh, just to discuss a, a situation that occurred in, in Pulteney. Uh, it was brought to her. So, yesterday, about midday, uh, there was a uh, some concerning conversations and rumors uh, that were swirl around Facebook, uh, Facebook pages, um, and uh, other social media uh, areas. Uh, so once uh, you know, uh, Mr. Devonis uh, brought to my attention, we then contacted uh, Tom Kerr and our school resource officer, a member of the Rutland County Sheriff's Department, and then we contacted the Sheriff's Department, the Vermont State Police, as well as the Vermont School Safety Center, and began an investigation. Um, and I did send out in, uh, a communication around three o'clock or so uh, yesterday around uh, the the early information we had and our early investigation had proved that there was no findings to this, uh, but I had asked for you know, any sort of information. Uh, and, and I just want to clarify because, you know, when we say like no findings or no, no, uh, no credible threat, these are things that are being determined by the Sheriff's Department and the Vermont State Police. Is that something that myself or Mr. Devonis or Ms. Roach or Ms. Madison or any, any administrators make that determination. And we turn that over to the law enforcement. That's part of how, how we handle the situations. Um, so when I uh, asked for more correspondence, uh, I you know, was very pleased that uh, there are a large number of individuals, uh, you know, only residents who uh, felt compelled to share information that they had, uh, some tips. 
Uh, and at that time, we believe that, uh, you know, as we shared this with state police and sheriff's departments, that it would be prudent for us to uh, to close school today, both Pulteney Elementary and Pulteney High School, just to allow uh, the, give our law enforcement agencies time to thoroughly investigate uh, this uh, this the, 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 you know, possible incident, uh, as well as also to kind of set set forth plans. We thought it would be irresponsible for us to wait till 9 30 10 o'clock at night to make a decision um, and so we, we try to you know get ahead of it and uh, just let people know for peace of mind we do understand this is a you know there's a lot of anxiety around this a lot of fear uh, i know that there has been a lot of confusion around the notion of uh, the term threats uh i i'm well aware of what is going on in uh the community of colney uh, some of the concerns around uh students around individuals i i've uh spoken with bro colson farrell the superintendent over at slate valley about uh there's a, a regional concern about some of the things that are going on with <clears throat> just uh students and decisions that are being made um about how we can be best handle this and, and we're talking disciplinary but i think we're also looking at um you know just uh, you know that's meet needs of all of our kids and what that approach looks like this re response that we had was regarded to a uh, specific I say, series of, you know, I guess, uh, scenarios that were uh, portrayed. Uh, it was not about uh, something that occurred last week or something that occurred at Shaw's or something that occurred. Well, this is about it, 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 something that swirled around. And, and I have to be very careful because I can't get specificity because there was not specificity. It was more it, it, you know, based around second, third, and fourth hand information um and so when we you know gave the information to the sheriff's department the state police they did their investigation they visited homes they did searches uh and so when they made the determination that uh this the scenario uh, that uh, was the possible scenario was a non-credible uh, that's what uh that we were referring to and so when we said that you know the schools safe to reopen tomorrow it's because of this scenario that was uh, present. It's not to say that, uh, well, what has occurred in the past that we've somehow waived or not taken seriously, um, but it's in regard to this specific scenario incident. Um, I have asked our uh, school resource officer, Tom Curran, who was a large part of this investigation to be here, to, if he has any uh, anything he'd like to respond or, or say, but uh, Tom, is there anything you want to add to that? or? Uh, for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Tom Kern. Uh, just to give you a background, again, all the agencies were investigating all the last night. The administration and law enforcement worked very well last night. Uh, we needed time to look at everything, and uh, I think we, we had that time to make a, a good decision. And like I said, I just want to reiterate that, uh, the, the, you know, the, Determination of the the non credible threat with regard to this situation that Tom and uh, the, uh, the county sheriff's department, state police had looked into, um, but if there are the the other concerns that 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 was that was not part of this investigation or scenario. All right, thank you. Principal reports. Our two stars here this evening. <laughs> Thank you. Well, my absence for the last two months was just because we were holding pre-planned um, music events at the school. So it's nice to be back. Thank you, everybody. Um, <clears throat> my report is in the um, packets that you received. And, you know, we had a really fun month of May. It is a nice time of year to spend with kids. Um, lots of field trips. Our annual sixth grade field trip. Um, I was fortunate enough to attend this year, so got on the bus at five, rolled off the bus at 10 o'clock. The evening, spent a really fun, um, beautiful day in Boston, um, interacting with families and kids in just a different way. It was, it was incredible, um, and the kids are still talking about it. So um, some of our other classes participated in uh, events as well as the school year is ending. We held our field day, modified, unfortunately, with the cold weather um, yesterday in the Staff and students kind of rallied to make that a really fun event. Um, there was a reading wars challenge where students decided they were going to read 15,000 pages. And if they met that, I got a pie in the face yesterday. Um, and so they succeeded that with 16,000. And there's some <laughs> video somewhere of me receiving a pie in the face. So 
all in good fun, um, and it was really energetic for the kids. Um, we're looking at our pool day on Monday, really hoping the weather holds out for that. Um, <clears throat> and looking forward to that community event. I've always experienced it as a program leader for an after school program, so to be able to be there with families and students is going to be uh, something I'm looking forward <clears throat> to. Um, before I pass it off to Mr. Devonis, I just wanted to take an opportunity to um, recognize and thank Lori Serrani. When we come back to the July board meeting, she will have since retired. Um, and I just think it's really important to recognize that she's been with Proctor Elementor for 15 years. She's worked with three different administrators um, and she's been very, very helpful, you know, building the community. She's been more than helpful for me this year. And I just wanted to publicly recognize her dedication to Proctor Elementor. Wish her well in retirement. Thank you. Joe? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, my apologies, there wasn't a board report in. Um, so a few things going on, but I'm going to talk about the positives in my building. Um, Great. <laughs> we, uh, I'll pop this. We went on a senior trip. Uh, <laughs> senior trip went, I got on the bus at three in the morning. <laughs> and uh, Saturday morning, and got back at one o'clock in the morning. And I was at school. But anyway, um, Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday. <laughs> uh, but the no, senior trip went really well. Um, great group of kids. Um, there's been some good stuff going on, end of the year projects going on, our eighth grade math class or uh, in high school math class that Mr. Thomas did had some wonderful, our final final projects coming in uh, the other day and they, they look great. Um, you know, a lot of initiative from the kids, our guitar class had their concert. I call it a concert, I know it's not a concert recital, whatever you want to call it. But I, again, a lot of good things. I got silly string because the seventh graders did so well with their in the math class moved up and stuff like that and uh, i was a little late going in mrs kerber stepped in and got the beginning of it but then i they got me at the end so uh you know just again there's some there's a lot of positive things going on in our building in our town and uh i know there's a lot of negative right now but um you know we're it, it, I, I will say, you know, and Tom said it, we, we worked really well last night and it wasn't just an easy decision just to say we want to can we cancel honors night last night. We're looking at how we're going to, you know, we, if we schedule it or what we're going to do. But, um, it, it, you know, but people rallied around. There's been some got some emails and communication from um, some parents and families about what can we do to help? Is there anything we can do to help? So, you know, a lot of, I'm going to keep stressing the positive things. Graduation tomorrow night. Um, it, I know people aren't going to believe me, but we, we always plan for outside. But I told my wife yesterday morning, I said, I'm going to be in the gym, just looking at the forecast. Um, it looks like some thunder showers and yeah, we don't want to get all set up and then have it rain. Like even if it rains at three in the afternoon, but it's going to be clear at six. So, um, you know, little things like that, but again, uh end of the year stuff went really well um and again i'm just going to focus on the positives here so. good deal thank you and our other principals have events at their schools this evening that's why they're not with us um before we move out lisa maxson do you want to give us um at the last meeting we talked about proficiency based grading changing the system um changing from a three to 1.5 and not there might be a clarifying um issue and i think we need to make a new motion and lisa matson is going to kind of walk walk you through that because everyone was here and we discussed it thanks lisa um and i i'm sorry uh jen and jay aren't here tonight to contribute to this conversation if there's questions i will do my best since i was wow. at the last meeting um but what um our intention was with the shift um was to change the passing grade for credit for a course from a three to a 1.5 uh, but our intention is to keep proficiency for the the standards that are being assessed at a three um, and i think the wording of the motion was a little tricky um, in that very complex nuanced subtle distinction between the two things so we were looking for a motion um, to change the uh, passing score for credit for a grade to 1.3, um, but the proficiency, that doesn't need to be part of the motion, but the proficiency would remain the same. 1.5. Yeah, and if there are any questions about that, again, having not been part of the conversation, I'm happy to try to address those. 
And so why are we changing it? So it's changing the credit, receiving the credit, not changing the proficiency. Because the way it sets now, it almost, it becomes inflated. Everyone has to have received a three to receive the credit. So they don't have to do as much? No. So no. It was, it was never, when this was set up, passing and proficiency were never meant to be aligned together. So, and what this is doing is, is a student, uh, so currently right now, it, it, in order for a student to pass a class, they can need a three uh, for proficiency. When we have a conversion scale in place, because, you know, this it, is unique to the 9th through 12th study, we convert that three to a, <clears throat> to a 3.0, which is equivalent to a B, and there's a bit of, you know, great inflation going on because not everyone is at a three, really is at a 3.0 or a B. So by going back to doing what so much what other uh, the schools in the area are doing is the fact that proficiency and passing are kind of separated which is what it really should be. Think of it as a D, a 1.5. The only way I could understand it was I thought of it as kids could pass at a D, okay? But then, and a B was higher. So they're saying that you can be proficient. Be, you're gonna- well, so you could get like a D minus and still pass. Right, so think oh, of it like that. that. Yeah, <laughs> think of it like that. Because that, that's the only way I could sort of put it together. But you're still talking about proficiency. Well, they're not dumbing it down. They're just right. It's just right. Changing, What's happening right. is, is people yeah. could say, yeah, I passed. Yep. Right. And that was the problem. Because we're thinking everybody's yeah. passing with a B. Right. And not everybody's doing that. So a motion would be in order to change the passing grade for credit from 3.0 to 1.5. So moved. Discussion. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everyone. Uh, moving on to finance. Lewis. Uh, so the only thing I'm out tonight is the tax and presentation note. We sent out uh, earlier today. <clears throat> so each year we get a, a line of credit loan from the bank help fund our expenses until we start seeing revenue come in. Um, so the year starts on July 1st, um, but our first revenue doesn't come from the state or from the treasurers until September. Uh, so we need funds to cover the payroll and purchasing from July to September, and then throughout the remainder of the year. Um, <clears throat> so the last few years, we've just stuck with our the bank that we use for our everyday banking because it simplifies the transfers in and out for payments. Um, so our, our proposal tonight is for a loan um, at the interest rate of 4.67 percent, and it's for 3.9 million dollars. Um, it is a line of credit, so we just take what we need, and then we can make payments so to pay it off when we don't need it to reduce interest. Uh, this past year, we did not use our line of credit at all due to the amount that we had in surplus and reserve funds. Um, so our interest cost last year was zero. In previous years, we did need to use the line of credit because we didn't have that reserve fund sitting there. That kind of um, also, a couple of years ago, the board uh, allowed us to use the, we have money sitting in our trusted scholarship accounts. So to take loans from our own account to use for everyday cash flow and pay back to the end of the year. So that's the total of the interest payments. Um, I don't anticipate that we will need to use this next year, and if we do, it'll be a very small amount to the surplus that we still have sitting on our books. Um, in those reserves, we have a maintenance reserve fund, and we also have our extracurricular reserve funds, and then we also have that present scholarship fund that we need on a temporary basis. But it's it's there as a safety net in case we do. So are you looking for a motion? Yes. Mm -hmm. So a motion will be in order for a line of credit for 3.9 million? Depending on how much we need. Yeah. So if we need two hundred thousand, we'll just take two hundred thousand. We don't take full. <laughs> just paying interest on the borrowed amount. Just the borrowed amount. Okay. So motion will be in order for three point nine million dollars in credit of four point six seven percent. And authorize Lewis to sign. So moved. Motion by Linda. 
further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. So I have to vote not this year. I'll pass them around. Okay. This is where the, the green tab is where I would need forward signatures. Okay. I need authority. Uh, contract recommendations. Professional staff. FY24, contract and horizontal moves. Kristen Krupp, uh, West Rutland PE teacher, 51706. Lindsay Sabo, Pulteney High School PE long term sub rates be determined. Nicole Bolden, Proctor Elementary teacher, 4388. Lauren Harvey, Pulteney High School teacher. Rehire after one year contract, 46535. Dillons and Gelly, West Rutland teacher horizontal move from 51706 to 5614. Mallory Buxton Erickson, Proctor Elementary teacher, horizontal move from 50,413 to 56,876. Questions? Support staff, FY23 new hire, Christopher Ballard, Pulteney High School. School custodian, $20.61. Caleb Kelly, West Rutland Summer Custodian, $13.18. Questions? Extracurricular FY23. <clears throat> Melissa Christensen, Pulteney High School National Art Honor Society Advisor. Stipend to be determined. Christina Roach, Pulteney High School National Honor Society. Society Advisor, 483 stipend. Gary Holder, Proctor High School Girls Varsity Coach, 3,000 stipend. Tabitha Perry, West Rutland Summer Program, $25 an hour. Wendy Douse McNaughton, West Rutland Summer Humanities Camp, $40 an hour. Dillis McLaughlin, West Rutland Summer Humanities Camp, $40 an hour. Robin Garrow, Proctor Elementary Summer Program Substitute, $20 an hour. Marie Coombs, West Rutland Summer Tutor, $40 an hour. Mary Ojala, West Rutland Summer Tutor, $40 an hour. Lisa Whitman, Pulteney Elementary Summer Program Coordinator, $50 an hour, and enrichment at $25 an hour. A motion would be in order to approve contract recommendations as presented. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Discussion. <clears throat> Why wouldn't the Art Honor Society be the same as National Honor Society for a stipend? I honestly don't know. Okay. It's just one of those things been like that. So it's not in the master agreement, so it's just like it's there for the board to set that rate and set it at the same time. Okay, that's what I thought. So are we setting it at that rate? Okay, good. I mean, are we is everyone good with that? It seems like that. Okay, yeah, so yeah. four eighty three. I make the motion with setting the art, what is it? Our honor, honor society. society advisor instead of to be determined there to be the same as the National Honor Society. Or anything. All right. Or anything. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. <laughs> Resignations. Nicole Bolden, Proctor Elementary Pair, effective 630-23, pending approval of Quarry Valley Proctor Elementary teacher contract. And Larissa McDonald, SEL Behavioral Coach, effective 622-2023. The motion will be in order to accept the resignations as presented. So moved. Discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, for the fun time. Policies. All the policies are first first words. D4, volunteers and work study students. D10, renewal of personnel. D11, public complaints about personnel. F2, search and seizure of student property by school personnel. F7, student athletics, clubs, and activities. H5, Title I, Part A, parental involvement policy. E10, fire and emergency preparedness drills. And E11, control and visitor management. 
A motion would be in order to accept the policies as presented and send for second read. Or, yeah, for second read. I'll make that motion. Motion by Kristen. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> General public comment. Is there anyone present from the public that would like to speak? Tosh. Where is it? Tosh. All right. Tosh. Um, thank you. I'm sorry I missed the first part of the meeting, so I realized there was public comment earlier. I didn't quite get to it. Um, I know this was something that was brought up at the previous school board meeting, but I didn't. I just wanted to come back, and I'm addressing this to the board. Uh, in regards to the letters that were written to Eric Maxim, I assume you had time to look at them and I or and read them. I know there were many, um, so I didn't know if anyone might have a, a comment or some um, something to say in regards to them. That's a school board member. I would appreciate if they might. No one oh. present has anything to share. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, since I know I have a minute or two left, um, okay, I'll just make a comment and then I'll let, let you be on your way for the rest of your meeting. I, I guess I'm a, a little bit confused um, and don't understand why I, I don't see anything personally or professionally why this person wasn't chosen because if, if, you, if there was something questionable, I don't see why he would have worked at our school for six years. I don't understand why he would have uh, been allowed to be a do a student teaching at our district and also already have gotten another job at another school district outside of our district. Um, so I question the validity of the choice for those that said no. And I understand you may have obviously had your own reasons. I just hope that um, school board uh, townspeople that if they're satisfied with your decision, and I'm sure there are many, that they continue to vote you in but I do hope that others will question and ponder um, the validity of your choices when they do vote down the road for school board members. And I do thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. All right, is there anyone else that would like to speak? All right. Seeing none. Oh. Wait a minute. I would like to speak, please. Yes, we have you. All right. Go ahead. Good evening. Thank you. Um, my name is Rachel Totten. I am a parent with two children at Pulteney, one at the elementary school and one at the high school. I'm coming to the board this evening because I am concerned about the quality of education my children are receiving based on the recent incidents at Pontley High School, I would like to ask what behavioral policies are in place to address the current behavior of the students in the high school? What behavioral policies are in place? Right. So it's, okay. are we gonna get in Q&A over there? No, no. Okay. All right. I, excuse me, I didn't hear you. These, these are so, items. If she has questions, we can have myself or Joe reach out to her. Bring right. Back yeah. So the superintendent or principal will reach back out to you with responses. Or, to bring this meeting. or we can respond to you at the next meeting. Can I let the board know what I'm speaking to specifically before um, I finish? Not if, not if you're speaking about a group. Uh, referring to students or a particular incident? Absolutely not. I speak in general. You can speak in general terms, but that is it. I'm concerned about the vandalism as a taxpayer. 
I am concerned about the distractions in the classroom due to behavioral issues. I'm concerned about students being blocked out of classrooms and bathrooms. Thank so you. So these are, these are issues that sh should be going to your principal. These are not issues that should be coming to the board. So we will My have- My principal is aware. Thank you. The, the principal and the superintendent will um, be in touch. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? All right. Yeah, oh, excuse me. I'd like to speak. That um, I'm a parent of a high school student at Fort Wayne. Um, and my son's a good student. And your name? Uh, my, excuse me. My name is Susan here. And um, when I hear you defer that, I wonder what is the purpose of the school board? Um, and when I hear my son talk about what's going on at school, I want to focus on the positive too, but if this isn't the platform to discuss that and the school board isn't setting that process in place for the, the principals to apply, then what platform would that? I understand you talk to the principal, but what policies are you putting in place for the whole school district to address in general any concerns from parents um, when they're stuck like this happening at school? And what are the policies of the school district for consequences for these? I'd like to know if this is happening at Proctor. Um, I would like to know if this is happening at West Rowland. And if it's not, why? What's the distinction between the way the two the three separate school systems operate that cause that situation? Um, my son was denied going to honors night last night because of this. Um, his friend, who he's at Civil Air Patrol today with, is a student at Colby and has a bleeding kidney and two black eyes because of what's going on. I understand that it's not just happening in the school, and I understand that the school district is doing their best. To, it's, it's a parental issue, but it's also happening. Something's going on in the school as well, and I think there needs to be zero tolerance. Um, our kids need to be safe when they go into the school. And if we're not addressing it here, Tori, you dictate the process that goes on at the school. So I think it does need to be discussed here. I understand it's probably an ongoing investigation. There's a lot of rumors going on and a lot of scuttlebutt going on on Facebook, which is not the place to discuss this. Um, but I'm a concerned parent with looking for answers and safety for my child. I want to know when I send my child to school that they can be safe. I don't feel that way. Um, and I'd like the school board to address it. So I think we had the superintendent and the school resource officer address that um, before this. Um, as you well said, there are limited things to what we can say and can't say here in public session. Um, and with respect to policy and those kinds of things, I mean, our, our policies are all on the website, so policies are available for public consumption. And, you know, concern should always first go to, if not the teacher, but to the building principal and from the building principal then to the superintendent after there is a uh, hierarchy uh, of how things are reported before they come to the board. The board is always the last resort the way policies and procedures are, are put into place. Okay, so can you speak to the policy? Is it a cross-board policy for Pulte? I understand I can... Yes, the, the, the policies are all for, are not just for Cory Valley, they're for the GRCSU. So whether right. you reside in Rutland Town or Proctor, the policies are the same for all students mm -hmm. and teachers and um, parents. So it kind of realized that there was going to be parents and concerned parents going to be here tonight asking questions. So I and what's I your name? Mary Nichols. My kids go to call me also. I'm not I'm not one of these parents that's gonna have I'm not I don't have a pitchfork. I'm not here to like make waves. I'm just a concerned <clears throat> parent. You should I mean you kind of probably 
And when, didn't you know that there was going to be people on the Google Meets and here wanting to know some answers and being concerned? And, and that's what we addressed. That's what the superintendent addressed. And that's what the school resource officer addressed. And I would think that parents, whether you're here or on Google Meets, if the situation was reversed, you would understand that there are limited things to which this board can share or discuss in public. And it doesn't, that that's just the way it is. And I think the superintendent and the resource officer tried to speak to what happened the process we went through, the steps we took, how things went on last night, and it's unfortunate. It's it's a drag that a small group of people messed it up for the majority. But I mean, it's we are addressing it. We do have plans in place, and we are moving forward. Just kind of wish, I, and I'm not saying you don't, but like kind of put yourself in our shoes as parents being concerned and worried to send our kids to school when this is happening. Like my son gets questions on going to the bathroom because of the destruction and the property being destroyed in the bathroom. My son has to tell his teacher that he's either he's going one or two out loud in front of a class. Should that really be happening? Yeah, right. And I understand yeah, it's not <laughs> unique to cold me. It's not. It's it's a pervasive issue that's going on in all the schools. Um, and it, I'm not putting blame on anybody. No, but it's time to have a zero tolerance on this stuff and step up as adults and say we're not putting up with that. It's it's not fair to the kids that come to school to try to learn. It's detracting from these kids. They can't learn in, this, in an environment like that. And I feel the same way. I feel like I, I support I support the school. I, I do it. I support my son's class. I'm a co-advisor in his class. Um, <clears throat> my son's relatively laid back. But this is an escalating issue that's pervasive. It's going into all it, I I know other school districts are having that. But it needs and I understand it's in the process, but we need to, it, it needs to be aggressively dealt with. And I hope that's what you're doing when you're being very general about it. You can't talk about it. I get it, but I hope it's being aggressively addressed. I mean, I love Fulton Lake. I graduated in 1998, class of 1998 from Fulton Lake. I was so, I am very happy that my children attend Fulton Lake and get to lead, you know, the goals <coughs> and, and do everything that I did as as a high school student. And I think that's what makes me even more concerned. I love polling and and I I just find it very um scary. And just No. And he did not. But it 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 kind of started there. Okay. It's not blaming really, it's not no, 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 it's not. No. no, it was yeah. Okay. <clears throat> my name is Alex, I'm a parent in Tolkien, and I would not like to make my comment for you, I guess. I just kind of wanted to add on to what you're saying. I was at the Honor Valley Unified um, School Board meeting on April 11th, where um, there was a school threat the day before or something, and they didn't uh, do anything about it. And Or at least um, it wasn't, school wasn't canceled, and what I saw when there was a school board meeting was um, a school board that was very receptive of the parents that came, um, parents came with statements. And it was an environment where parents were, were really welcomed to come and talk about it. And I so far hear some parents that are expressing some really serious concerns and like really big answers. I feel like that they're receiving. Um, I mean, it just feels a little non-compassionate. And compared to how that meeting was, that is within our region, it's within our county, and they handled it really different. And I mean, I think we can learn something from them about listening to parents and um, really honoring <clears throat> what they're saying because it's hard to come into a space like this. And share. So we're welcoming, and anyone has an opportunity to speak. I, I don't know that any of us are being non compassionate or um, feeling about this. Many of us are parents of students or former students within our schools, and we all understand the issue at hand. And we, as board members, are dealing with it. 
and it is trying, it is um, upsetting, it is, um, last night it was something that people were working on for a very, very long time, and because simply because we are vague in our responses does not mean that we are not concerned, that we don't want to um, have a safe space. We, we're here because we want kids to be successful. We're here because we want kids in all of our communities to have opportunities, enrichments, and go on. No, none of us are here to create any kind of detrimental um, events within schools. So, it, it is very hard to be a board member sometimes and to hear these things. And to not have the ability, because of certain things that the law says, that our district says, of how we have to um, abide by, you know, and follow a chain of command, because that is the that is the reality, and it is horrible. I subbed at the school yesterday at the high school you know because of, of lots of reasons but i you know I, I never want parents to ever feel that we're not hearing you and not feeling as lisa said compassionate because there are but there's just a board can only do so much in, in you know in terms of mike brought it up the other night in terms of you know we we deal with the money you saw it tonight you know we dealt with the money stuff and it's just so hard sometimes to do that but that is the job that we are obligated to do and it doesn't mean that we are not listening to you and not feeling that there needs to be things done but when you tell them to take it somewhere else and mention it somewhere else, or to look at the policy, it just, that doesn't feel like you're. I know, I know, and and but that is also the the problem is too is that the board deals with policy, the administration deals with procedure, of how things run, and that's I mean, that is how um, boards run, and if. If the board at Otter Valley, if you felt they were more compassionate, I don't want you to feel that we are not compassionate towards this because it is so hard to be in the community and know all these things that are going on and you are in a way helpless because as Lisa said, we have to follow a certain way of doing things. But we don't want you to stop making phone calls to the people that you feel you need to make phone calls to. And and the superintendent is always, you know, open to phone calls as well. So don't feel that we don't feel this because we do. And we we do care about these kids. And if there was some way that all of us as a board <laughs> could somehow fix this problem, we would do that <laughs> in a heartbeat. But it's just, there's just certain things that the board can do. And, but keep doing that, keep following through and keep talking and keep going. You know, there's a, a select board Monday, um, go to you know if you feel that they can hear you go and talk with them also but don't stop talking about it um, offering support to each other and you know there might be ways that we can help each other after school as well but we are stuck by certain procedure excuse me certain policies and certain legislation that says to us this is what we have to do but None of the four Fulton people and none of the West Rutland or the proctor or any or the superintendent feel less than poor, you know, we're just dying inside because it's awful. It's horrible. We don't want our schools to run like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate 
the work that you do because it's hard. You're caught between the parents, the legislative process, everything. And I appreciate that. Thank that's, you. That's why I wanted to like come. I'm not here to point fingers or pitchforks or any. It was just I'm kind of <clears throat> simply concerned. Right. There's fear. There's fear. And, and with fear comes anger and all kinds of stuff. But again, you know, we talk about this and we try, but um, we just have to work, work together, follow, keep following through, keep working through. If you need to contact the, even um, the police have been great about, you know, if you feel the need, call, call the police, you know, and talk to them because they're there to support our schools and certainly in Pulteney and they're there they are also bound by law and policy and procedure as well and sometimes we feel that we're stuck in a box because of it I know I do I know principals do I know superintendent does sometimes but this but don't stop talking to each other don't stop asking don't stop calling because that's when change will take place but we're behind you 100 percent chris do you have something now uh, no i think what linda did a very nice job of saying thank you linda, that's very eloquent uh, and uh, i i think what i want to express to the individuals here and online uh, i i do hear you i'm well aware of the, the issues the situations i think the, the past 24 hours um but i i there are also certain there's a lot of red tape and hoops that we have to move through as well sometimes it's a slow moving process uh for us but that doesn't mean you know that uh our, our kids should have to wait uh for that process to take place and so it's something which i've uh i know that i've worked with many Fulton parents and you know over the course of the year that uh you know through phone calls uh with, with you know with joe and with kristen very receptive but i would encourage you to continue to you know reach out and you know, find a way because like i said i think you know that i've said this before and you know there are a lot of great, great students in all of our schools, in Pony High School. Uh, you know, when I walk in the building, I see a lot of great kids. And the last thing I want to see is those students lose uh, one bit of their educational experience, you know, one day of that educational experience. They, 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 I mean, I, I have a, a daughter, and I would not want her to ever have to lose a day for, for whatever reason or lose an experience. And I think it, it, it's something that we, that we have to look at. How do we? You know, how do we get better? How do we improve? How do we change these schools? I, it, but it's it's going to be a collective effort. Uh, there are things that obviously that we have to do in our schools. Uh, you know, there's structures, there are you know procedures, there are approaches that we need to take. We need to uh, draw a, a, a hard line in, in certain instances. Um, but there are there are things that we need to do in our communities. Uh, you know, with community sports, there's a, there are regional approaches that we need to take as well. But uh, so it's it's. It's a very complex, nuanced process, but it's something which you know. So we, I, I do hear it. I do read every single email. You know, uh, you know, I get past you know once I pass the names that I'm being referred to, things like that, then I can then see the message because I think at the end of the day, I I, I hear the message, and I think what I do see from people is they just want the same thing I want for my daughter. That's just what their daughter have a great education, have a great experience in schools, and if if anything's in that way, they just want somebody to. to fix that or uh, change it. And that's something which, you know, we've I've been charged with and something which I'm going to continue working on. So, but uh, if I can help in any way, please just continue to reach out and I'll you know, uh, partner and work with, with you individually or as groups. So thanks. All right, thank you. All right, uh, the next meeting will be July 13th and we will be here. Future agenda items, we have the uh, facility use form, and people are going to bring samples to look at. We don't have any need for executive session. I think we do. We have a personnel issue that we probably should go into executive session for. Can I, can I ask about the adding to the agenda for next month? Sure. Um, I have, um, after speaking with Joe Thank and you. with Chris. Thank you. Um, Thank both you. Joe and Chris, mm -hmm. I've, I've started working on a theater program proposal for Pulteney and I just need, a, I needed a little bit more information so I couldn't get it ready for this month, but I would absolutely love it if I could bring it up at July, July meeting. Okay. Thank you. 
<clears throat> okay. And so an executive session for contracts for personnel? No. For just something for personnel. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So a motion has been made to move into personnel or move into executive session for personnel. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Alex. Thank you everybody. Thank you. At 7.30. Discussion? Thank you, Jim. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, we're out of executive session by consensus at 9.13. A motion would be in order to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously.